There are certain animals that everybody loves, like diamond. Everybody loves diamond, that's why you're here watching this video. But it seems like there are certain animals I talk about on the channel that you seem to hate. So today we're going over the top five most hated reptiles and why you should give them a little bit more love. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. I just don't get it. There are certain animals that I wanna make more content about, but every time I do, nobody watches them, which tells me that you don't like watching content about these animals, which means that you don't like these animals. Why don't you like these animals? They deserve love too. Really, this is the least watched, but you should give more love to list. And let's start it off with number five, frogs. Why don't you love frogs more? Frogs, I don't like a frog. Frogs are amazing. They are one of my favorite species to keep. Sure, you can't really handle them, or you shouldn't. Sure, they're more of a display animal. Sure, they're kind of boring, some of them. But then there's other ones like dart frogs, or red-eyed tree frogs, or white tree frogs that are so much fun. And there's some for everybody. For example, if you're a night owl, get some red-eyed tree frogs. These things look insane. They are so much fun to watch. If you're someone who isn't around at night, you sleep at night, and you want something that's uh, available during the day, Red-eyed tree frogs probably aren't for you. They're just gonna kind of sit there on the glass, like pup, I don't know what, like they don't, I don't know why they do this. Whereas a dart frog species is going to be way after during the day. I love dart frogs. I work from a place where my dart frogs are all around me during the day. So I can go around and I can feed them during the day and I can hear them calling. The Santa Isabels are crazy and it's just, magical almost. So I love watching them move around and because a lot of frog species can be cohabbed really easily with like no controversy, uh, I just think it's cool because there's more of them that you can look at. Everything's kind of moving all the time inside of the enclosure. And to me, that's fun. That's why I like big bioactive enclosures, even for small animals, because everything's moving, your eye is moving, the scene is changing. That's why people like to watch movies instead of look at pictures. Or that's why if you see pictures in a, in a video, they're always moving. People don't like to look at things that are stagnant. And dart frogs, for example, or tree frogs at night will give you that. Why don't you watch frog content? I think it's riveting. Okay, number four, turtles especially aquatic turtles, but also tortoises. If you don't know, all tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. I get it, they're kind of goofy looking, they're like turtly enough for the turtle club and stuff, but they're fun. The reason that the main thing in my living room, like the main attraction, the main piece of art, is this really cool enclosure, what's well, aquarium, with two turtles and fish, is because things are always moving. It's beautiful, it has a background, it has cork, like it has a whole bunch of stuff, and you can watch these turtles swim, I don't know, this is swimming, I guess, and just interact with each other and they have a basking platform and they, like, they're just cool. And then with tortoises, I keep mine outside. They're really fun to look at. They're fun to watch. They're always kind of moving around. I feed them greens and stuff and they're fun. Like, the way that they move quickly is hilarious because it's still slow. I just think they're adorable. So the fact that you guys don't like turtles and tortoises, I, I don't understand why. I guess they're not as exciting as like a, I don't know, like a big lizard or a big snake or whatever, but I think that they are underappreciated. And sure, everyone has a radar slider and most people probably shouldn't, but there's really great options like stink pots, for example. If you wanted a musk turtle, most people can take care of a turtle that gets this big in an aquarium because you can have a 50 gallon aquarium and it's big enough where with the red ear slider, you can't keep them in a 50 gallon properly. It's just not something that's possible. To a certain extent, maybe it's good that turtle stuff isn't as popular because it would make people want them more and maybe they take shortcuts. But at the end of the day, the whole point of the channel and many others is to show the best care for these animals and kind of inspire people to take better care, right? That's why my big snakes are in giant enclosures. That's why my ball pythons are in four by two by twos. That's why I keep leopard geckos by themselves in 50 gallons. And then the same thing with the turtles. The turtles that I keep, most people don't keep them in enclosures that big, but I think they should. And that's why I like to show them. What do you think about turtles? I like turtles. Do you like turtles? Let me know in the comment section below. I like turtles. Number three, kind of an obscure one, plated lizards. 
Now, if you're saying, Adam, I didn't even know you had a plated lizard. That's because I used to make a lot of content and nobody watched it. So that tells me that you don't care. But why you don't care blows my mind because these are some of the coolest animals that there are out there in terms of lizards. If you get them handleable, which you can, they're great. They're not really super bitey. Yeah, they're a little bit flighty off the get go and they'll tail whip you and they'll pee on you. But I mean, some people are into that. Try it out, man. And that's okay too. I think that because they're from Africa and they like higher temperatures and it's kind of not difficult to keep, but maybe a better option. Maybe for example, you want something unique and cool that your friends don't have and you want a Savannah monitor. But then you realize that Savannah monitors get big and they eat kind of a weird diet that is maybe difficult for some to facilitate and they need wildly high basking temperatures. Or you want something like an Aki, which is a similar size, but again, the basking temperatures are too high. Maybe get a Sudan plated lizard. They're smaller, easier to care for, basking temperatures aren't as high. They're kind of plated. Mine's name is Attila. The reason her name is Attila is because she like is plated. Reminds me of like Attila the Hun. So anyway, I think that they're cool and they're insectivores, which makes them really easy in my opinion to care for. Have yourself a cricket colony, a dubia colony, some mealworms, whatever. Toss them in there with some supplementation. Wham, bam, Bob's your uncle, Fran's your aunt. You got a happy suit and plated lizard. Just make sure you buy them captive bred, which they're pretty easy to find and they're not expensive for now until stupid YouTubers might blow them up in popularity because they're pretty cool and they're fun to watch. Number two, we talked about this one a couple weeks ago, axolotls. I kind of get it because if you have an axolotl, they're not my favorite animal to keep. They're actually my girlfriend's animals. They kind of sit there. Like they're cool to watch when you feed them because they look like suction cups, like hoovers kind of. So I think that's pretty cool. But in terms of like movement and stuff, I don't know. Like. I get it, but when I talk about them and I show them, I try to make it entertaining and fun to watch. And at the end of the day, an animal that is gonna be extinct in the wild, basically no doubt about it, for, you know, in the next coming years, because there's only 50 to 1,000 of them in the wild, yeah, I just think that it's cool to have. And there's so many morphs and some of them will glow under black lights. And you know that you're getting captive because they don't really ship them out anymore. And realistically, if you breed them, as long as you have good homes for them, you know, it might be a good thing because if we have enough that we could possibly repopulate if that was ever an option, then that's cool too. And if not, because I'm not saying that's always a great option, even if not, at least we have them on earth where if we didn't have them in captivity, we wouldn't because they come from two lakes in Mexico. One of them is no longer a thing at all. It's completely dry. And the other one is a shell of its former self. They're gonna go extinct. So if you have them in your living room, you have something kind of cool that may not be available and wild for your grandparents, your grandparents, for your grandchildren to see. All right, number one, non-reptiles. Okay, I get it, I get it. Sometimes it's amphibians. If I do videos about amphibians as a whole, we talked about frogs and axolotls already, which are both amphibians. Eh, but sometimes also I talk about like raptors, which technically raptors are reptiles sort of because birds are reptiles or we think so now or Anyway, or sometimes I talk about things like farm animals, which I totally get because it's like, Wiccans, Wicked Reptiles, what the heck are you doing? But I'll tell you what, this video was the most fun filming animals <laughs> that I think we ever had. Pigs and ducks and ducks are tech, anyway. I get it, but at the same time, I like to branch out. Do you like when I branch out? If I did like an Adam's Awesome Animals video when I go traveling, would it be cool? Like if I filmed like a bunch of lemurs or something, would you watch it? Let me know in the comment section below. And if not, that's cool too. Just let me know and I know to do it or to not do it. I don't know why I'm doing this. Anyway, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. It really, like honestly, it helps the channel so much you dragging your mouse and clicking it. Like you wouldn't even understand how much it changes the life of these animals, me and this channel. So thank you. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You get discounts on the merch. You know about those trips that I keep hinting at. You get extra stuff, extra videos, video content, vlogs, behind the scenes a bunch of the old videos that are no longer available on the channel. Like my first reptile room tour is only available on Patreon. And let me tell you, the first reptile room did not look like this. So for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of that too. And uh, okay, that's enough. That's it. Because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.